information. <laughs> These puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. Welcome to Greenville. I'm Sheriff George Woodman. Call me George. There's definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zach? The coffee warned me about it. Great presentation, dude. Okay, so we are in the right spot. Indie Mouse says, this is my first time catching up on this game. Can I get, uh, or my first time watching the game. Can I get a, um, a catch up? So we're uh, Agent Morgan York. Everyone calls us York. Um, there's been a, a murder in a small town, uh, but also there's supernatural elements at play. And uh, we're fighting some demons right now for whatever reason. All I ask is that, like, during this section, if this is the first part you're seeing of, uh, of Deadly Premonition, you're probably gonna be like, what's up with this gameplay? It looks kind of bad. You have to tough it out until you see, uh, some cutscenes, and then you'll get it. Then you'll get it. Or some driving. Also fair. Yo, what's going on back there? Dude, that's a that's 20 bucks right there, guaranteed. The gameplay looks pretty good so far. <laughs> Does it? You can do it, dude. Dig! Well, you know what? Life's short. Thirty bucks. Thirty bucks. Want to go in with a full clip here? How is NL playing without it crashing every five seconds? Uh, excuse me. It's because this is on the Nintendo Switch. It passed certification. You mean magazine, though? No, magazine is the thing that you buy at the grocery store if you're over the age of 70 years old. Oh, oh. Observe. It's locked, but there's no keyhole. Looks like the lock is on the other side. What's the last magazine you bought? Oh, oh, it could crack quite easily. I don't know if we should have done this. The last magazine I bought, I don't know. It would probably have to be like... I guarantee there was a period of my life where uh, I thought I was like a, a very serious guy. So I would like you know, go to the airport when I had to fly places, and I would buy, like, one of those business magazines that I thought, you know, very important business people read when they were flying, because they don't have time to not be not learning about business-related stuff. But luckily, after, like, doing that a couple of times, I just got over it and was like, this is an extreme waste of my time and money. Hey, one of my housemates in my second year of university had a, an annual subscription to The Economist. So, I'm just saying, I wasn't the, I wasn't the only one. I was the only 19-year-old in history who had an annual subscription to The Economist. My man was, like, wearing suits to his sophomore year physics classes. So I don't remember what I'm doing, by the way. Um, I mean, I remember, like, we came through here. 
We shot some aliens. I remember that. And then we got th we got the handle that opened that creepy door. But then uh, we we need evidence. We need evidence. Ah, we killed this tree. I remember killing the tree. Yeah, we're still in the sawmill. So we're moving onwards from this point. Just popping in to wish you a nice stream and a nicer day. Well, thank you. This is very nice. It's a nice thing to say. Plus, you uh, have to be a subscriber to talk. So it's the ideal way to consume my content. Give me money and don't talk. <laughs> Got him. Sort of. Um, you can talk, you just can't criticize. So, I mean, like, by process of elimination, don't we have to be going this way? Mmm! I remember. The elevator. First aid kit. That's not a first aid kit. That's a box of bandages. You're in for a rude awakening. If you think that's gonna help you. Okay, so yeah, we saved. Then was it- Hey, I remember! Wasn't it like this thing is broken and now we need more parts for it or something like that? It's wild. I didn't think we ended at like a bad spot last weekend, but what do I know? Whoa, computer walls. <laughs> well, you know, it's a sawmill. The motor looks intact. So we have to find something on this floor. In order to allow us to leave, because I'm... Pretty sure the elevator is down. Those are the PUBG servers. Da da. Lollipop. You guys remember that song? That was a classic when I was like negative forty years old. Oh, lolly, 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 lollipop. And then they hit you with the... Ba -dum -bum -bum. Not Lollipop by Lil Wayne. That's a, that's a remake. I don't support song remakes. Songs these days, they're all just remakes and sequels, dude. Okay. There's gotta be something down here. I wouldn't put it past the game to have us shoot everything. I'm begging you though. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We, there was something there. Observe. Can't get through this rubble. Yeah, no kidding. Blast them. It was in the locker room at the start. The start of this section, or the start of the sawmill? Cause like... We can't get back to the start of the freaking sawmill. The start of this stream? So like one of these locker rooms? What? Oh, yes. You're absolutely correct. Huh? He's done it. Blast him. He's immune, Zach. Um.
The murder doesn't seem as important now that we know Pyramid Head is here. I mean, this guy's the murderer, I guess, or something. I don't know. <laughs> People are very strange these days. <laughs> Milk and coffee. It's a very caffeine-focused game. <laughs> That's like $87? That is, like, $87. Do people from where you're from do the inhale talk? What is the inhale talk? Is it like Tenacious D's inward singing? Like... Like that? Like when you yawn? In Norway we say yes by inhaling? Yes. Really? That's... Maybe I just need to practice more. Just a short inhale? Yes. <laughs> no, we don't. It's a yup. Obviously, we don't say it in English. But isn't, isn't yes in Norwegian just like, yeah? Yeah, it's... <gasps> Like that? Ah! Uh, get it off. I'm ready. <laughs> Die! In investigation failure. I I hit left and right many times. Let's let's do continue instead of game end. Die. It's called an ingressive yaw. It's interesting. I've always heard that, um... Get ready. Oh, it was B that time! Oh, crap. Sweary, you got me. Get ready. Nailed it. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. I always heard that uh, Norwegian is like the most similar. Well, it's the easiest language to learn as a native English speaker is what I had always heard. Isn't it Swedish? <laughs> What's the difference? But really, I'm pretty sure it's Norwegian. Um, Dutch as well? Okay, yeah, I could see that. I mean, that, if you want to learn to speak Dutch when you already speak English, all you have to do is add like an extra A to every word, right? Like anytime you see an A, just imagine your keyboard is broken and you double tap the key instead. That's Canadian. All right, got him. Fair enough. You got me. We can all make fun of each other. There's only, like, if you speak English, French, Dutch, German, Norwegian, Swedish, you know, we can all make fun of each other. Icelandic, etc., etc. There are many languages we cannot make fun of. So we might as well just enjoy yes. making fun of each other. Are you? Okay, you're, you're dead. <laughs> it's chilly. Love to be trapped in a maze. To be pregasm. Yes. 
I swear he said Botswana. Send him. Yes. <laughs> we just gotta implement our maze solving algorithm. Anytime you hit a dead end, turn left. Except this time, because I saw the door. Idiot. Botswana. I I have seen Great. Resident Evil. Whatever the heck uh, the the subtitle is, the one that's like Dead by Daylight Project Winter or not, not Project Winter, Dead by Daylight uh, Resident Evil. That looks cool. I'm uh, I'm eager to see if it turns out and Project Resistance. Yeah, and uh, I mean I I love those asymmetrical horror games. You know, some games you're like, this is aching for some indie charm. Some games you're like, this needs some AAA polish. Every time I play Dead by Daylight, I'm like, this could use some AAA polish. <laughs> Although I've softened my stance a little bit on that game. Nice shot. Nice shot. Now I, I think I like it for what it is now. I'm like, it's a, you know, it's a fun concept now executed like pretty... Uh, pretty competently. It is still hilarious to me, though, that that game has such a an incredible audience size and like player base. But more power, more power to him. I mean, I've been playing Isaac for ten years, so you know, pot calling the kettle black and all that. Hmm. <clears throat> It is one of those games where I see Steam reviews that have literally, like, you know, a thousand hours, and they give it a thumbs down. And they're like, the devs really ruined this by making blood perks too omnipotent. Uh, I don't know, I was trying to come up with a good word there, but you get the idea. Basically, Petty complaints about a game that they played far too much. White noise on the TV. I was gonna say omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. There's too many omni words. Well, of course, I'll change suits. Yeah, anytime there's a balance change, it's. Yeah, they killed him! He's done it. Yeah, no, I get it. Hey, Millennials. You, hey, you wanna see me trigger a bunch of Zoomers? I know exactly how to use this piece of technology. Hey, if you're born in the year 2000 or later, this is what's known as a telephone, sweetheart. I don't know if you've ever seen... Where do I touch the screen to turn it on? I don't know. <laughs> you just pick it up, dumbass. Freaking idiot. You know, if you could talk to me, you don't really need to phone me. Perhaps the television will now work. Blast it. Oh, dude. Something's going on out here. Here's Johnny. He's here again. Let's hide quickly if we don't want any problems, Zach. The locker! The locker! Wow, the perfect crime.
Oh. Now when he goes for this one, we're gonna pop out and run. I'm loving this picture in picture though. I hit ZL. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Left. Yeah, this is the same thing. Use left. Nope. Just die. Investigation failure. This is its own unique brand of mind flood music. I mean, I saved. How about Malph getting that Mewtwo with 3,200 power? Yeah, no, that was pretty wild. How about Malph getting that Mewtwo with 1.4 million Stardust and uh, 440 Mewtwo candies? At which point I called him a liar, and he said, nah, dude. The guy who traded me the Mewtwo also traded me all that dust. And I went, I don't think so. Because you can't even do that. I will admit, though, he almost got me. I was like, if he was playing Pokemon Go in 2016, someone might have swapped him, like, a lucky Pokemon for a lucky Mewtwo. But then when I saw its power and the amount of candies and Stardust he had, I was like, I don't think so. I don't think so, Malph. It's open. <laughs> Malph was that one kid who said he had Pokemon Orange with Mew 3. <laughs> Absolutely true. Malph's dad works at Nintendo. Yo, Skyhops, thank you. Okay, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to hold my breath. Got it. Should we go? Should we go? Let's go! I thought we had to wait till he was searching the wrong locker and then just sprint for it. You just wait it out? Okay. Okay, fair enough. We'll just wait it out. Look, this sawmill section has been okay. It's been adequate. But I'm really, really excited to get back to my hotel. Talk to that lady again at the incredibly large table. This is the worst part of the game in my opinion. Dude, that's great news, because it has been okay. Still better than uh, Resident Evil 7's boat section. Okay, I'm ready. 
or murdered soul suspect. Yeah. Murdered soul suspects anything section. I've been thinking about that, Sir Toasty. What's your favorite movie you only watched out of circumstance? I, I guess it depends on what out of circumstance is. Um... I mean, on an airplane is in circumstance. I actually, I kind of agree. It, were it not for being on an airplane, I probably never would have seen Game Night, which ended up being pretty good. Um, or like my mom when I was 15 or 16 being like hey you want to go to the theater and see this new Tim Burton movie and I'm like yeah sure I like Batman ended up being Big Fish great movie Dude, Jesse Plemons is like, he's insanely funny in Game Night. Bear said Tucker and Dale versus Evil. I could see that as well. Um, I have seen it myself. I don't really like it, to be honest. I don't like it as much as the internet, I guess. I did it! I did it right! Alright, this part sucks really bad. <laughs> I give you permission to frame skip? That's good. The only thing stopping me from getting through this section was I needed permission from chat to beat it. Now that I have your permission, let's do it. Blessed name truncation. Yeah, I get it. Blah, blah. I need a hundred percent focus for this. This is like the the final fight in Indigo Prophecy, where it's twenty five minutes long, and if you miss two quick time events that are invisible on the screen, you uh, you have to start over from zero. Let me in, thank you. Hey! <laughs> Easy there, man. I think it's not a good spot. No. You, you really think that maybe we're just in the wrong spot? I don't think so. Swery, what the fuck, dude? I thought 
I was holding the button, but I will I will hold the button uh, with even more ferocity. Swear he didn't even want combat in this game. Well, you know, here it is. This isn't combat. It's one-sided combat. There is a location to hide if you want the solution. Yes, please. I'm begging you for the solution. In front of you. Under this, under this blood sink. Just hide behind the door. <laughs> I see you. All right, it'll work, I guess. Sorry, I got a peek at him first. This is all, it, this is just Slay the Spire A20, dude. It's just about keeping your morale reasonably high. As long as you keep your morale high, you're gonna be fine. You got nothing to worry about. Yeah, it's like Dicey Dungeons Episode 4. It might take 10 tries, but one day we're gonna get there. Hold the butt. Hold the butt. Get ready. We're gonna hold the button. That won't be necessary here. Where were you? Where are you? Well, that's new. Marco. Get ready. We may need to hold the button. Get ready. Okay, here he comes. It's it's being held. Still being held. Still holding. Now released. My blood pressure. Oh, get ready. I guess I don't see you. My bad. Destroyed a perfectly good door for no reason. Oh! <laughs> Where do we got another one? <laughs> okay, well that's when you save. Yeah, he's a Belmont, dude. Zach, this is a waste of time. What are you Let's talking go. about? This is a waste of time. Let's go. <laughs> Th 
thought I was what dead, like my etc. etc. Ah, yes, climb up, climb down. A bee. <laughs> oh, my God. Go. Uh, push, I guess. Why don't you just go around? Why don't you just go around? He's right there, man! Careful, careful! Get ready, you're gonna have to evade! What a bizarre gameplay sequence. But I kinda like it because it means I don't need to know the way back. He went around that one just fine. Oh, he knew a shortcut though. Okay, okay, get ready. No die! No die! The vents? The vents, dude? I'm pretty sure that's my fault. Because I shot them earlier. Please, thank God. He's on cooldown. He's in his refractory period. Very casually open that up. Yeah, try chopping that one down. Oh! He's got the right idea. <laughs> okay, get ready. Get ready. I'm free. Okay, I fell down again. It happens. All right. Well, next time I am not going to shoot every vent. to use the door please thank you <laughs> amazing all right well we have restored the power we can now leave I think I don't know what we've discovered here um, at all He does talk like it's Rocket League quick chat. Wow. Incredible. We learned a lot about living and a little about love. It's a good section. Dude, I would love a Vadi lore video about this. Again. <laughs> Still going up. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. And then I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the heck is Y on the Nintendo Pro Game Controller? 
keep switching back and forth from the 360 to the Nintendo mm -hmm. controller. My bad, I hit ZR, like some kind of fucking idiot. <laughs> Please, God, let me out of this. I am begging you, Brandon. You're absolutely right. This is us trying to avoid Brendan's maintenance. He throws us on the ground and he goes, uh, okay, scheduled maintenance for server upgrades. And we go, nope, no thank you. All right, we're adding map select. Miss me with that. All right, uh, there's a big patch to add new loot boxes into the game. We're free. Okay. Um, uh, custom games need to be reworked. In order for our esports e event to function, miss me. Send them. That's all it took. That'll keep him busy. You got torn piece of red raincoat. All right, Leonard Cohen. Yo, it's time. What do we call it? It's time for us to do divining. Profiling. That's right. Here we go. Um... Little brother spam in chat, please. Hey. Come here. Who could have predicted this going wrong? The heck is that? It's the upside down peace symbol. Like spiked bracers? It's like an Australian camera in GeoGuessr. I've got it. <laughs> That's all the information we need, Zach. <laughs> Open Let's go and back shut face. We found. Free me. Free me. Don't make me drive. I'm out of gas. Just arrest George and close up shop. Okay. Before. So quiet. No, not that I know of. But that raincoat is a little odd. Can you speak up, please? Odd. In a town where it rains so much? <laughs> well, the people here rarely go out in the rain. I moved here during high school and I never really understood why. Can you shed some light on this, George? Shh, shh, shh. No. Well, there's an old story. Folklore. It's a fairy tale to me. Something about a killer in a raincoat who appears on rainy nights. A 
vicious killer in bright red raincoat. Just a foolish piece of superstition. Story someone made up. Is it though? Not many people still believe it, but I guess it's a traditional place. It's a red state. What are you gonna do? Most of the shops still close up when it rains. School's out too. School's out too. And since there's no reason to go out, not many people ever wear raincoats. And now the raincoat killer has leapt out from his picture book. I like that. Buy a raincoat? <laughs> I don't think so. What if you just uh, put your life on pause anytime it rains? Person with the upside down peace mark in that photo we found. He's our killer. Then what makes you so sure about that? Zach and I saw him kill Anna in the lumber mill. He killed her. Right in there. Oh, one thing. Please don't ask me about this. <laughs> That's the anyway, by showing me your backs. Clear up most of my concerns about you. Isn't that for the best? If you do want to remove yourself Can I like the suspect list, it will make things a lot easier. <laughs> can, can you turn it up, please? Your methods are rude, insulting, and out of the question. And Emily is a female officer. Forcing her to show you her back is harassment. I don't care if you are FBI or not. You are out of line. Mm-hmm. Hmm. George. It's okay. Let's just show him and get it over with. Emily, are you crazy? Look, we scratch our backs and he'll start trusting us a little more. Right? Agent York? <laughs> well, I'm waiting. Yo, can somebody take her batteries out? Are you satisfied now? She's too bright. My apologies. Now you, George. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. that's the switch dim. Can't refuse it now, can I? But don't expect to get your way all the time, Agent Morgan. Shut up and strip, old man. I'm on it. Let's do this right on. My pony. <laughs> huh? George. He shredded. He scars, just like your Mr. Zack. Something private. I don't have to tell you about it. Of course. Just like Zack. <laughs> Yeah, easier to hear, maybe. I have to say, you're both pretty much off the hook. Thank you for your cooperation. If anyone is suspicious around here... Yeah, nobody saw his back. He's the most suspicious. No, I don't think so. But he certainly is the most irritating. We've studied the crime scene. You know what we have to do next. George, can we arrange to have the town folk gather in one place? There are some things I want to address with the town folk. Oh, yes, the town folk. Very well. I'll arrange to have as many as possible gather in the community center tomorrow. Thank you, George. <laughs> Make sure they're exposing their backs to me. I have this wrapped up by lunchtime. Oh, it's so loud again. Yeah, what if it's raining tomorrow? 250 bucks? That's the first time we've been ripped off. Oh! Welcome back, everyone. Ah, Thomas. Agent Morgan, it's past 2100. Let's meet up again at the community center tomorrow. I haven't been sleeping much since this all started, to be honest. Try sleeping I'm on exhausted. your stomach. I was just about to suggest the same thing. I'll make arrangements for people to gather between 1500 and 1700. 
I'll try and get as many people as I can to come, so don't be late. Okay? Don't be late. I'll be so there. Ratty. The community center's on the south side. I've marked it on your map. Thanks, Thomas. Well, then. Sorry. See you tomorrow. It's irresistible. Ooh, he showed his back again. I better get something to eat soon, Zack. <clears throat> no, I'm done with this. Absolutely not. <laughs> Yo, it's like Overland. We just have to take a car that actually has gas in it. There we go. Eat the food in your inventory? It's a wise play. I'll eat my smoked salmon. You ate a lot. <laughs> Speaking of 80s movies, one jewel in the rough springs to mind. Deadly Spawn. Do you remember that one, Zach? Back in 83, directed by Douglas McCown. Right. It was filmed pretty cheap, but still it was pretty good. The monster design with the mouth crammed full of teeth. <laughs> I loved it. So many delicious B-movie cliches. Did you know that they made a sequel? But I never got to see the sequel. The rental store didn't have it for some reason. They said the staff for the sequel was totally different from the original. Wonder how the sequel turned out. You know, the monster in that one responded to sound. Wait, Zach. Sounds a lot like the movie Tremors. He's absolutely right. I think that one was back in 89, directed by Ron Underwood. Reba McIntyre. That was a great role for Kevin Bacon. Masterpiece. Zach, that one had sequels like crazy. I remember there was a fourth one. I've only <clears> seen the first one, though. It's a wise choice. First one's very good. He's recording an Isaac episode. <sighs> Why does this man refer to himself in the third person? Um, he does not. He's talking to Zack. Look, I'm trying not to hit the sides, but it's tough when your car is so big. The license plate does say vid games. Why'd you take the SUV then? Well, whatever Whatever car I took there on the first time was at like 0% gas. A real road. Tremors. I think Fred Ward was in it. Absolutely. You say Fred Ward and I say... Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. I say Tremors, personally. That one was back in 85, I think. Directed by Guy Hamilton. Guess Hamilton was aiming to start a series like 007, but it had no sequels. A real shame. Do you remember the martial arts they used in that film? Called Sinanju? The ultimate in martial arts, using no weapons at all. Remo's master Chun 
ran across water, remember? And he loved soap operas. Man, that was a good character. He was played by Joel Grey, the best supporting actor in Cabaret. Of course, in Remo, he had so much makeup on you couldn't tell. I've met my match. He knows more useless information than I do. He, he has bettered me, absolutely. <laughs> he does not drive better than me. Don't be ridiculous. Well, that's awkward. Zach, Emily arranged for people to come. Oh, wait, this is the community center. I thought it was taking me back to the hotel. Let's come back at the right time. <sighs> Is there any place we can get some sleep around here? I didn't know you could do that. I'm looking for beds. Just smoke for 15 hours. What's the smoke button? It's an item in your inventory? Is it, is it a side? I, I missed it. Oh yes, you're absolutely right. Heavy cigarettes. Use. Oh no, I have to, I have to reveal that I don't know how to tell time. Better get something to eat soon, Zach. I should go to bed soon. Yeah, I mean, I know. That just happens sometimes, don't worry about it. Okay. Well, it's pretty simple. This is, we're finally using items. So let's, let's eat some pickles. That's gotta be a lot of sodium. And then... Drink coffee. You drank your drink down in one. And then... Smoke some cigarettes. And... We're just gonna... Sit here for... Like 13 hours, I think. <laughs> oh. Okay, it's 4.36 a.m. Oh, he's, he doesn't like it anymore. He's got to eat. I think we should go back to the hotel. Uh, what the fuck? Amazing. Oh. I'm dead. 
<laughs> and that's why you don't smoke. Okay, now I'm at the hospital. It's 9 a.m. I guess I'll save. Did you sleep? Ah, I'm not worried about it, honestly. I definitely do not want to replay the hospital section. That's a police car. We can take that. Drive to the police station. They will serve you lunch. Okay. Drive to the police station. They'll serve you lunch. I wish I could just zoom out a little bit. Oh, of course. That's my mistake. Toggle map, whatever the heck that means. Whatever, dude. We'll figure it out. Yeah, 100% agree. Maps are for cowards. I remember how we got here from the police station. <laughs> now, Joel Gray's daughter is, of course... Mm, from Dirty Dancing, and also Jennifer. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. You know that, right, Zach? Jennifer Gray. She's in one of my... Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Movies. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. What did I tell you? 1986, directed by John Absolutely Hughes. true. Matthew Broderick? Oh, so 80s. Zach, you're not the most cheerful guy I know, but you really do like those cheerful movies. We used to love those teenage movies back then, didn't we? Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink. Also John Hughes. St. Elmo's Fire and Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Sean Penn. That last one was in 1982, directed by Amy Hecker. She also did Clueless. Now that was an impressive film. You've got Sean Penn in the lead. Told you. With Jennifer Jason Lee and Phoebe Cates. And Kitts. remember Judge Reinhold? Not to mention Nicolas Cage and Forrest Whitaker. Were Known as too. Nicolas Coppola And the original moment. book and the script were written by Cameron Crowe. From Almost Famous. How could that not be a great film? Do you remember, Zach? When that movie ended, the last words, the end, was from an arcade game. That's right, it was from Missile Command. That stuck in my head for a while. The memories. I feel like I have a lot of movies to catch up on. Let's just hope we can get to the end of this case. Oh, oh, oh. got him! Can catch up on a few. Give some thought about what movie you want to see next, Zach. Ad Astra. I'm seeing double. Four Ryans. Can't get out that side. I screwed it up. Zach, is there something here that you want to check out? We need to be at the community center by 1500 today. It is Just it's think nine o'clock. In front of all those people. What do you think, Zach? It's going to get fun. <laughs> we went through a loading screen for that. <laughs> Excuse me. I desperately need to eat. Oh, we got 16 bucks for it. It's just that easy. Can you turn on the lights inside, please? Potato. You're absolutely right.
A uh, little 9 a.m. beer. Whatever gets you out of bed in the morning, I guess. I feel like an alien. I'm like, how do I order food from your restaurant? Hey, I'm working here. You can't just stroll into a chef's kitchen. Then perhaps you would give me your permission to enter. No. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Zach, everyone has their own sanctuary. Let's leave him in his. But also, I'm very hungry. Could I have one of those heads of lettuce, please? Hey, I'm working here. You can't just stroll into a chef's kitchen. Then perhaps you would give me your permission okay, to enter. My mistake. No. Get the hell out of here. The police station NL? I didn't forget, it's just the map does not Zach, it's not usable by sanctuary. human beings. Let's leave him. Why can't place. I get food from the restaurant? It's open. A huge ice cream cone. Though they don't actually serve ice cream here. You said you remember how to drive there? Yeah, I was lying. Oh, oh. Oh, it's just a freaking it's a, Magic the Gathering card with a cup of coffee on it. Colorless artifact. They don't serve food here? Look at how much alcohol they have! It's a diner! Small mouth bass. Hello, Josh. I'm trying to eat food so I don't die, but it's not working out too well. Check the map for the love of God. Okay. It's literally right there. Okay, fair enough. You got me. What are you gonna eat? I don't know. I'm just hoping this thing, you know, can get it out of second gear. Like, uh,. The opposite of your love life if you're on the television show Friends. Okay, Zach. I've been thinking about what movie I'd like to watch next. And finally, I've made a decision. It's always hard to narrow it down just to one movie. But I've put a lot of thought into this. And I'm sure you'll agree with me. 1975. Directed Close Encounters Stephen of the Third Spielberg Kind. Himself, the grandfather of panic movies. Set in a small town in Massachusetts. That movie made me stay away from the beach oh, it's for Jaws. years. <laughs> so I was afraid that a hand might come floating up. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah? It's Jaws. The underwater camera work accompanied by that John Williams music. I've never been that scared by a movie before. But the best thing about it is that it isn't just another panic movie. The mayor who won't close the beach even when there are so many victims. And Chief Brody putting the citizens' lives above all else. Richard Dreyfus film gave a lot of time to the dispute and friction between them. Certainly had a lot of messages for a two-hour film. That's probably another reason why it was such a record-breaking hit. One of my regrets in life is that I didn't see it at the movie theater. Unfortunately, I wasn't I born yet. I guess I was yet. still just a child back then. But still, I wanted to taste that terror in real time. That reminds me, Zach. Did you know this one? Jaws also appears in another movie that was produced by Spielberg. 1942. Second Back to the yeah, Future. Yeah, Back to the Future 2. It was directed by Robert Zemeckis, who later made Forrest Gump. That's right, Michael J. That's Fox. That's also a masterpiece, of course, but we'll discuss that another time. Christopher Lloyd. So, the scene where Jaws appears is right after Marty McFly goes 30 years Oh, it's he goes to the movie theater. It's he Jaws 2. He passes by a movie theater and is attacked by a holographic shark. Marty is shocked, of course, but looking closer, 
Jaws the words, Part 19. Jaws Part 19. That's right. The director is credited as Steven Spielberg Jr. In reality, there were actually only four Jaws movies. Michael Caine made one. It was one. still a great joke. 30 years from 1985 would be 2015. We'll be there pretty soon. F. I wonder what life would be like by then, Zach. <laughs> really makes you think. Yeah, he doesn't even know we're going to storm Area 51. Okay, definitely save. And Thomas, do you have any biscuits? Are you reading? <laughs> How's fried egg quarterly? Joke's on me. That's a, that's a raw egg, dumbass. They have crude chairs in here. I'd hate to sit through a long meeting in one of these. Welcome to the working mm -hmm. week, dude. Please, I need lunch. Mm -hmm. Thomas, Hello. do you want lunch today? I can throw something together. Yes, please. I'll have it ready for you in a jiffy. So, oh, you know, baby! What you want to talk to everyone about? This case goes deeper than you think. The town folk may have heard about the murder, but they don't understand it. It's a very dangerous situation. And I need to warn them properly. I hope most of them are decent enough. To I'm really, come. just concerned no why we need there. Thomas to make us Emily sandwiches. Made all the arrangements. I've told everyone to gather around between fifteen hundred and. And why do these guys get like a little mini pizza? It's not fair. I want a mini pizza. Of a film I saw recently. The town is under attack by aliens, and so the mayor calls all citizens to the town hall to warn them. However, seeing this, the aliens attack the hall and wipe them all out together. Is that relevant, Agent York? They They're actually the models. They used a combination of balloons and meat sauce for exploding heads. <laughs> Those aliens start firing their death rays. And Heads start popping. Black. Really quite something. Agent York, some of us are trying to eat here. <laughs> I know, Emily. I'm one of them. Well, anyway, your cooking is the best, Thomas. Thanks for the sandwich. <laughs> nope, no problem. Oh, let's go. I could use a nap, honestly. Don't open. But why? You can go to sleep in the jail? That is true. We could also just drink a bunch of coffee, but they are like, you know, 80 bucks each. Garfield and Cradle Street. I should heal myself. I am filthy rich. How much time do we need to- We only need to pass two hours? Dude, I'm gonna drive over there. That's not that far away. I gotta know. What an incredible waste of my time. <laughs> he, he eats straight sauce? It's Daniel. <laughs> Tomato sauce straight out of the can. I don't know, out of the jar sounds bad. Out of the can is like vile.
It's because glass is higher quality. I don't know, man. Well, like, I know when you can things, you gotta, like, superheat them to actually kill all the germs or something. I guess you put it in a jar, you just, like, make it and then jar it. Back Nothing. to the Future 2? Just my imagination. Running away with me. Glass leaves no residual taste, but it's more expensive. Understood. I'm in. <laughs> this is remarkably similar to PUBG driving. In that, I'm bad at it, but still better than anyone I've ever seen. I got it. I don't think you can nap in the car. Zack, Emily arranged for people to come between 1500 and 1700. We can't do anything here right now. Let's come back at the right time. It's like an hour away. It's two hours away, but still. Come on, come on, let me get an hour or two out of this. Stop me. Stop me. Stinky agent minus $22? What the heck does that mean? <laughs> Go shower, you stinky. Oh, yeah, I gotta change my suit. I got... I lost 22 bucks. Surrounded by flies. <laughs> High quality beef. It's so good. Every time it just fills me with dopamine. Zach, I haven't been on stage like this since elementary school. I'm not some tree in the wind this time. <laughs> Everybody hates you, dude. Go a take a shower. Was a piece of scenery. Bright red tree. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming today. Getting right down to business. Agent Morgan from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. You're all familiar with Richard Agent Morgan and his vile stench. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Some of you are already aware by now of the tragic murder of Anna Graham. Truly a heinous, terrible crime. I've come to this town to solve the murder of this young, beautiful girl. And to bring the one responsible to justice. Unfortunately, That's the chef! Incidents like these have I'm watching you, buddy. ...happen again. These are really nice chairs, though, for a, a small-town community so center. Share some advice in order to minimize the risk of further fatal incidents. Firstly, please stay away from any dark, dangerous, isolated places. <laughs> like the circle I've drawn with hash marks on the Those whiteboard. Of your children, especially of Anna's age, please guide your children away from such places at all costs. 
Secondly, avoid going out when it is raining. <laughs> Who is now, that? I've heard the folklore story of the raincoat killer. There is a Did you see the Virtua Fighter character in the audience? Story. Women should also be especially careful. I would hate to see more victims. Oh, but the door is mic'd up. Yo, she's coming to the meeting in Louboutins. She right to the front, not to be messed with. Carol McLean, bar owner and singer. Who's the fashionably late? That's Carol, Thomas's sister. She owns a bar. Thomas's sister. Outside when it is raining. Young women should be especially careful. Report anything or anyone suspicious immediately. The murderer will be caught and brought to justice. But you must all remain on guard until we do so. That's all I have to say. Thank you. You all right, Thomas? I forgot about this guy. <laughs> Peter Whalen, weird cyberpunk. When paying for our sins, we must not frown. The loss of Anna was for that debt. So says. Can you just do this? It's like in a town hall, everybody gets 90 seconds. When purple fog covers our town, we'll all wander in hell, I fret. So says Mr. Stewart. Boo! Get out of here, Mr. Stewart. Oh, and now we've got the irreverent music. Sure knows how to steal thunder. Well then, Zach, let's ask some questions before all these guys leave. Yeah, like, do you know where the nearest shower is? Agent Morgan, here's your chance to get to know some of the townsfolk. Don't let it go to waste. Hello, Thomas. Got Agent any sandwiches North, for me? Your words really made me think about Anna's death again. How New could one song. do such a terrible thing? I'm still in shock. <sighs> Thomas, I forgot to ask. You don't have a tattoo on your back, do you? A uh, tattoo? No, I do, actually. <laughs> but why? <laughs> could you show it to me, please? What? Now? Here? Yes, please. This is vital for our investigation. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably a butterfly. Right okay. on his lower if back. It's gonna help you any. <laughs> well, I'm wondering who G is now, but aside from that. Did it tell you anything? It told me that you didn't kill Anna. Of course not. What are you saying? Wondering who G is. You want to see that tattoo, Zach? A big heart with an arrow through it and love G in the center. <laughs> I don't know when you got that done, but we've all been through the 80s. What on earth is that supposed to mean? Can you just Quite go home? Mysterious and very poetic. I gotta I say though, many of your audience proper face it. attire for my current stench. Mr. Francis York Moore, a purple fog appears with rain, soiling and ruining our town. The evil does not drain. Find out why the town is so. Mm -hmm. The 
source from which it boiled. Then and only then your case is solved. But for this to happen, to solve the crime, the proper must do the proper at the right time. It is not yet mine. Are you still going? <laughs> But if you, Mr. York, find the right timing to chat with me, that is, with Mr. Stewart, may that be informative and fruitful, you will see. So says Mr. Stewart. So, Harry, <laughs> you know something. But there's some reason. He was why talking for like four it. seconds is before you translated. It was like an inverted well, lost in translation rubbish, bit. Harry, and tell us what you know. We can force you to talk, you know. Oh, is he saying he's going to rip off his mask? It would hurt a great deal. Mr. Francis York Morton, pay close attention to the signs, the omens, and the premonitions. Small they may be, they still are finds, and helpful to your investigations. A, B, A, A, C, D, E, A, B, F rhyming scheme. Me and Zach, we know what we're doing. Mr. Francis York Morgan, Zach and I, so says Mr. Stewart. Mighty fine police work. Low polygon people don't count. Hey, uh, let me see your back again. Agent York, are you finished asking questions yet? When you're done, let me know. We'll all get dinner. Hey! I'm already endearing myself to the townsfolk. Yeah, the flies can come too. Yeah, call me York, I get it. Good evening, it. Agent. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Brian, the Gravekeeper. My name is Brian, Brian, the Gravekeeper. I like the retro look. Auditioning for Little Grave on the Prairie? Anna. Oh, she was so beautiful. Too soon. Mm. Too, too soon to go to the grave. So sad, so Sad. I totally agree. Are these your flies or mine? I'm here, looking for the one who did it. Were you close to her? Mm. Anna, <laughs> her smile, so warm. Yeah, you got him, Brian. Just that cool. Anna, blonde hair. That classic, so gravekeeper coolness will get him off your trail. There's a graveyard somewhere in town, Zach. I'm not excited about the idea, but maybe we should at least check it out. <laughs> it's Brooks and Dunn. Q. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis. Polo shirt tucked into the. So jeans. Anna was killed, but why does that bring the FBI here? Quint Dunn, employee of the Darts Bar. I have an interest in murder cases involving young women. Well, you know, man, this might just be another case to you, but it means the death of a friend to me. I don't want you taking this lightly like it's just another case. I never take anything of this nature lightly, I assure you. What I'm is here to accent? apprehend the perpetrator who did this. Yeah, because local enforcement can't shine their own boots, right? Good point. You can't always count on the police now, can you? But that doesn't mean you're going to capture the perpetrator yourself, Quint. How do you know my name? <laughs> I memorized the name of every citizen before arriving in town. I also know about you and your significant other. Uh-oh. You mean Becky? Don't underestimate the FBI. We know and see everything. This is pre-Snowden. I'm sorry if I was a little harsh. I want to help, I do. Okay? Okay, Zach, I'll tell you how I knew his name. He's got a small Q on his hat. 
That was the only name beginning with Q that I could think of. He was even kind enough to tell us his girlfriend's name. Got him! I could read him like a book, Zach. <laughs> could have just asked him for his driver's license, but where's the fun in that? Spooky You're York, spider. right? I'm Richard Dunn, the owner of the darts bar. Swery 65. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and your I'd name like is count. Feather oh, Dart Spider? Aside from the murder that happened here. Yep. Murder just doesn't fit with a small town like ours. Well, Richard, I'll have to correct you on that. Crimes don't care about size. Big town, small town... Are you town-splaining to me? I guess you're right. So, how did you know Anna? Well, I've known her since she was a child. She was the same age as my son. You know, she always stood out, being pretty and all. Just like her mother, Sally. What do you know about Sally? Well, I, I went all through school with her right here in town. I never thought our children would be the same age. I don't see her here today. Ah, oh, well, see, she lost her husband, and this time it's her daughter. She's at home right now, trying to make peace with it all. You seem to know a lot. <laughs> How long have you been in love with her? <laughs> hey, hey, don't go there. That scar of yours tells me you got your hands full too, right? Let's not dive into personal matters. It'll be better for you and me. You're right, Richard. Collecting gossip won't help with the matter at hand. Now take your shirt off. That's the doctor. I know because he's still wearing his doctor clothes. Of course, plenty. Mm, tell me, Arthur, night when is pawn to Q3. That's still undecided. Sally isn't really in any condition to do it right now. Well, hey, um, man, I just needed I to see her, her back. Anna was a sole reason for <laughs> what is after her, her husband skirt? was deceased. Well, she's probably huddled up at home. <laughs> and I should probably take some time to pay her a visit. Well, yes, you should. And I'd appreciate it if you could, too. Um, but don't go too hard on her, okay? Madam? Are you getting closer to catching the murderer? No luck catching them killers, then. Hello again, Fiona. Good to see you here. Well, Dr. Johnson told me to be here. He said it would be important. Well, that was good advice. He may be young, but he seems like a wise man. Oh, and he's a very hard-working person, too. Everyone thinks he's some kind of weirdo, but I don't think so at all. Well... People don't understand why he's in the autopsy room all day, but I do. He's doing research to make no, he's the world to a better place in the future. You know, he already made a fortune in L.A. with his career. I did not know that. You didn't? Oh, the doctor is a very rich man. He has a really big house over by the lake. Amazing, Zach. He must be loaded. Rich and young. A perfect combination. But you don't get that feeling perfect combination from him at all, for what? do you? He doesn't show it. That's one of the things I like best about him. Well, I could have been fooled if it weren't for you. Thanks for the valuable information, Fiona. <laughs> okay. What on earth? Yo, this is Bill. So you're the FBI agent, are you? The general, owner of the scrapyard. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I'm the general. <laughs> I fought for my country in the Vietnam War. A real-life war hero. So why are you living here? Soldier, this is my hometown. <laughs> After a man returns from war, there's no place to go other than his hometown. Your little speech, you mentioned the raincoat killer. Was that a problem? You imbecile. The raincoat killer's no myth, not mere folklore, not a fairy tale. It's based on actual events. That oh, no kidding. This town. It is. I'm interested. Can you tell me more about this? <laughs> You kids today don't even know how to ask for something right. 
Don't man spread to me, you sir. Hear more, you I'm an officer office. of the law. He literally exudes raw power, Zach. <laughs> Despite the credibility issues, we should give him a visit. One thing, though. He calls himself a general, but isn't that a sergeant's uniform? Got him. He literally exudes raw power as he limps away. Slurring his words. Carol! Oh, dude. I could use him. was an airhead what do you mean are you saying she was killed because she was an airhead <laughs> or are you saying that she was an airhead for being killed I'm sure she's still an airhead even in heaven she changed her hair every day if she lost a pound she'd be ecstatic gain one and she'd almost be in tears she broke many many plates every day at the diner and she'd always have a smile on her face Always having fun. Everyone looked at her and knew she was a cute, adorable, loving Aaron. I get it. I get but it. They would be smiling right along with her. I wouldn't be surprised if the angels smiled with her too. Freaking airheads. <laughs> Isaac and Isaiah said that Anna was a fairy of the forest. A goddess. <laughs> she doesn't even know it's a, it's a freaking dead end down there, you airhead. Oh man, this is this is wild. What are you wearing? Those are snakeskin pants. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. Wesley, owner of the gun store called Panda Bear. People around here call me the gunsmith. It is actually Don Cheadle. <laughs> Was there something you want to ask me? How do you make a living running a gun store in a place like this? I'd be worried because there can't be that many customers. Worry gives a small thing a big shadow. I do gunsmith work in my shop, too. If you got the skills, the customers find you. Also, All you need is uh, network. boom, you looking for this? I hope so. Are you sure? Am I, am I sure what? You can't carry... He's selling guns at the community center? He's just, he's just selling MP5s in the lobby? <laughs> You've got quite a selection here. No wonder people come from Show all around. Loophole, Even today, brother. a customer paid me to go to Seattle for some help. I just got back. I see. Well, I'll be sure to visit your store sometime. I'd like for you to take a look at my gun. Understood. Look forward to it. Um, the shop will be open again tomorrow. It's usually open from 2000 to 0600. <laughs> well, yes. See you then. I'll see you there at uh, 2000. Uh, the the all-night gun store. It's open from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Nothing unusual about that. It's I'm U.S. Special PM, Agent whatever. Francis York Morgan. And you are? Olivia. Nick's wife? Yep. Anna worked at your husband's diner, right? What kind of girl was she? Well, she was a very hard worker. A nice girl. Kind of an airhead. Did you ever see her acting strange? Well, not really. But there was one thing. Well, you see, the diner closes when it rains, 
Many shops do that around here, as you might have heard. <laughs> anyway, Anna always seemed unfocused the day after it rained, and came in late, too. It was almost as if she used up all her energy the day before. Come to think of it, that was really strange. Did that legendary monster really kill her? It wasn't a monster. Just a criminal. <laughs> criminal I'm going to catch and bring to justice. Suspect. I'm U.S. Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I presume you are Always the owner of the diner. Wait for the right time. moment That's to strike. Right. I'd like to ask you a few questions about Anna Graham. Did you notice anything strange about her prior to the incident? <laughs> kind of an airhead. Nick, are you hiding something? No, nothing. Could be hiding sure? anything in those jeans. I'm sorry, but I don't like repeating myself. <laughs> what? He's stonewalling us. This guy. He's the guy I picked out in the crowd. I got her no more. Yeah! Hey there, FBI. I'm Keith Ingram. <laughs> FBI Special Agent Francis. What York is Morgan. that jacket? Please call me York. That's what everyone. I don't know if me. that okay, means. York. What I no think problem, it man. means. So, but Keith, I hear you run the milk bar and convenience store. That's right, man. Rock and roll. Do you sell raincoats there by any chance? Yeah, but nobody ever buys them though. Anyone who wears one of them, I say, just ain't a rocker. But you know, that scar of yours. Now that scar rocks. This scar rocks? <laughs> now that's a new one. <laughs> I'll drop by your store soon and let's talk then. Yeah, cool, man. Rock on, FBI. Very, very nuanced character. Please don't be his wife. You're Isaac and Isaiah's mother? Yes, I'm Lily. Lily! Keith's wife! This guy is Isaac and Isaiah's dad? Agent. agent York, right? You are good. <laughs> the handsome special agent. Give me some the great dinners. The facial scar trademark. The way you introduce yourself. Everyone's talking about you. Well, I can't say much about the scar. But the way I introduce myself, Zach and I consider it a kind of ritual of sorts. Everyone has their own rituals. It's like always leaving the house left foot first. Never heard of that one. It's one of those things. You certainly are a funny one. <laughs> he has mental illness. So have you noticed anything strange or out of place recently? Well, Becky's been taking a couple of days off from work, but aside from that, I heard she was in shock after the murder. But... You think there's something else? Well, I took the boys along to see her today. She's always so kind to them, and they love seeing her, too. But she took in the boys and told me to wait outside. Something about a special secret between just the three of them. I watched a Netflix show about this. I just couldn't understand this. it. Now that's interesting. Thank you, Lily. Perhaps we should give Becky a visit tomorrow, Zach. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I mean, she's married to Xanta. Oh, no. Yoink. <laughs> what do you think's going on here? This lady holding a pot of stew with one shoe on. Yep. Had a feeling we were getting that. <laughs> My pot is getting cold. Roaming Sigourney, nicknamed the Pot Lady. Hey, mister, my pot is getting cold. You are... who? What are you saying? I'm Sigourney. Sigourney. Sigourney, okay. Her now pot's getting cold, you airhead. No time for chatting. 
I need to hurry. My pot is getting colder. Oh, you're useless. <laughs> Zach, we've met all sorts today, but really, she takes the cake. Amazing. She's actually like a needle drug addict. She needs help. Mr. Morgan, you're quite an impressive public speaker. Really? Thank you, Polly. You reminded me a little of a play I saw when I was younger. What kind of play? I'm talking about back when this place was still called the Mercury Theater. When I was young, I used to come here often with my husband. God rest his soul. Great timing on the, on the music. the weekend to the latest play. He'd always pretend to be uninterested. But I could tell he was excited inside. He was just one of those kind of guys, really, thinking about it now. Really, Polly? So what's your favorite play? Oh, Equus. well, I like so many. There was one in particular, but I can't recall the name anymore. Oh, it was a very famous one, too. Something by Shakespeare? Oh, um... It's definitely Hamilton. Nothing. One more bell that doesn't ring anymore. I've always been forgetful about the plays we used Why'd you to bring it up? Day. Oh, and my husband would get angry at me for forgetting what we saw. He'd go on for hours retelling what the play was about. His eyes were so sparkling, like a happy young boy. <laughs> Shut up and show me your back. So, what's your favorite play? Oh, I almost forgot, Mr. Morgan. We're going to have another guest soon. I have to get back and get things ready. Sorry for having to hurry away. I'll see you back at the Oh hotel. man, she's quick. Zach, I think she could embarrass the toughest of the FBI's interrogators. She successfully avoided answering my question, Zach. Amazing. Eh, uh, what are you gonna do? Excuse me? Excuse me? <laughs> I ain't got nothing to tell the cops. <laughs> it's it's Gan Dieseling. What about the FBI? Shut up. At least give me your name. <laughs> I'm Jack. They call me Raging Bull. That's a manly nickname. If you want info, it'll cost you. I only talk to Ben Franklin. Well, you know, your sights first high. impressions are important. I can detain you for a few days, and maybe you'll become more fun to meet. <laughs> <sighs> Zach, this is a waste of time. Let's go. <laughs> I only talk to Ben Franklin. Aren't you a, a Final Fantasy 15 hey, character? Looking. Nice speech. Gina the Rose. And you are? Oh, I'm Gina. I'm married to Jack. He runs the gas station. I'm Gina the Call Rose. Me the Rose. <laughs> you look pretty revealing. Oh, <laughs> this old thing. <laughs> You should Can you just do eyes. up your shorts you. at least? Oh, now you are cool. That scar really is a turn on. You should come to my station. I'll give you a little extra service. That would be great. I can't believe how expensive gasoline is nowadays. <laughs> Some extra service would be great. Now, about my current case. Do you have any information on Anna? Oh. Have you seen anything suspicious? Oh, I don't know. Cool Talk to as my a hobby cucumber. about the difficult stuff, okay? This is getting us nowhere, Zach. Jim, thanks for your help in the forest. It's like how are Isaac and I? He's got an overall pocket for his Nintendo Switch. They really seem to love their grandpa. Well, have you met well, their parents? I guess they do, son. I want to keep them away from the filth of the material world as much as I can. Their mother agrees, which is why she lets me take care of them so often. And that's why I want you to solve this case quickly and go home. 
Those rumors about that scar of yours do more damage than good around here. I guess I reek of the material world. <laughs> well, I have reek to, of something. To do my job. But I understand what you mean. I'd think the same if I was born in a place like this, Zack. Got him. Agent Morgan, I'd like to let everyone go home now. Let's go outside. It's dinner time. I didn't look at anybody's bank except except Thomas's. <laughs> Please, Keith. Cleared it. Two hundred and sixty bucks. Plus four hundred and eighty-six dollars of basic wage, unpaid salary. Whatever the heck that means. Who puts tomato slices on their hot dog? I don't buy it. Green tomato. That's an apple, brother. Well then, Agent York, do you have any plans for this evening? I was going to head back to the hotel and go over my notes. I need to contact HQ and give a progress report too. Okay, and let's call it a day here. Sounds Thought good. We were getting dinner. Contact my office when you finish your report. We'll pick you up tomorrow morning. Diane, the owner of the art gallery, should be back soon. All right then, let's do that. Well, hold on, Agent York. We're going out to eat at Nick's diner. Would you like to come with us? The diner? That might be nice. Thomas is a great cook, but Nick is the real deal. No visit to Greendale is complete without eating at the A and G. Plus, it's the only restaurant. Proposition. Zach, what do you think? We can always go back to the hotel after eating dinner, or go directly back to the hotel. You decide, Zach. Let's eat with them. Mm -hmm. Anything that gives us more talking is perfect. Oh yes, of course. A doll that expresses rain by turning around. You don't need to... It's self-explanatory. Oh, we're back, boys. I like how we easily could have sat with them. But we separated because of my aroma. This is the worst murder I've ever seen. Our town is a little odd in some ways, but it's usually a peaceful place. We had our fair share of cases, but just the regular stuff... A high school kid shoplifting from the milk barn, maybe? Or some hot-headed kids fighting, fueled on liquor? <laughs> Nothing more than that. Agent York, what kind of cases have you dealt with in the past? Not much different from those you've just mentioned. The case I was on until last month, well, the guy killed seven girls in a three-month period. That's a little different. Then a dude stealing from, from the, the milk bank. barn. Took them back to his house. He cleaned the skulls up and used them as utensils in his daily life. To eat from or as a urine cup. <laughs> <laughs> he hated women. That was his way of dealing with it. As a he'd urine fill his cup. skulls with ice, cola, and rum. And he'd down it in one gulp. Cheers to that, brother! It's a holy ritual. The question of his mental state was the pivotal point in the court case. Oh, man. For me, he was insane. A hundred percent. Drinking from the skulls. Well, that is one thing. Did he just give it a thumbs up? But those he had used to relieve himself, he would then just use them to drink from, too. Yeah, that was too much for me. It's just not sanitary. <clears throat> <clears throat> not sanitary. Uh, that's probably not the problem for most of us. What else? Ah, yes. An ingenious law school student raped over 800 victims. York, this is not the time nor the Thank place. Thank you, Agent York. Now, let's talk 
about something else. You don't want to hear anymore? That's a shame, isn't it, Zach? I was just about to get to the good part, too. It sounds like you live in a totally different world. I mean, you're like an elite agent who just jumped out from a movie or something. In your eyes, you must look like we're just playing cops and robbers. An elite agent uh, who exudes up. raw power. With you. Don't say that, Emily. The cases you have solved are all full-fledged crimes. A crime is a crime. Size doesn't matter. There is no big and small. Actually, kind of like the entire point crimes of the justice system always have is that there are big and criminal. small crimes. And a victim. No victim will ever welcome a crime, no matter what its size. So, fundamentally, there is no difference in size. No, but, like, there's a huge difference. Well said, Agent Morgan. We work day and night to preserve peace and order in this town. You understand that, right? Of course. But still, I don't view shoplifting and Anna's murder as the same level of crime. Me, neither. Airheads. I never even dreamt that such a thing could ever even happen in this town. <laughs> I keep on expecting to see Anna here in this diner. Yo, right it's McCree table. behind them. <laughs> That's John Marston. <laughs> Excuse us, Agent Morgan. We should have made dinner a more uplifting experience. Let's call it a night. Okay. Good night, then. <laughs> If you spell donut with a U-G-H, you're an actual cop. Dude, forget that. I need to go to sleep. That is not the Canadian spelling. I'm not saying I've never heard it spelled like that. <laughs> Flies outside of the car. I just want to go a little faster. Oh my god! For some reason, the frame rate got like super fast there. Be careful what you wish for. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Straight ahead, then right. The opposite of Borderlands. <laughs> this might work. It might work. Skirt! Yo, it worked. Yeah, I gotta get home before dark, otherwise this... freaking, uh... Cerberus is gonna come out and eat me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<clears throat> the pickles. He's so stinky. Okay then, Zack. Let's go back over our progress. On the last episode of Deadly Premonition. First the victim, Anna's death. She was found hanging from a tree in the forest. She was cut open with a knife from her chest down to her stomach. That was the direct cause of death. The strangulation marks and skull fracture were caused after death. Her tongue was also bit off and I found something inside her mouth. Is this your card? Do you remember what that was, Zach? It was a red seed. That's right. We found the same red seed in her mouth. According to Emily, it was raining when Anna was killed, but traces of tears were still evident on her face. Which means the perpetrator killed Anna under a roof in the lumber mill, and then carried her body into the woods after it stopped raining. Because he doesn't own a rain. We found numerous important pieces of evidence at the site of the crime. A total of four things. Knee prints in the grass. A wood chip with metal dust. I remember. A photo of a man with a tattoo on his back and one other thing. Do you remember what that was, Zach? It was a broken stiletto heel. That's right. A broken stiletto heel. Aligning this with the other evidence suggests that two people came into contact with Anna's body prior to it being discovered by us. Those being God, the perpetrator who killed Anna and Miss Stiletto Heel. Do you think it was roaming Sigourney missing her shoe? To the woods. That means we could be dealing with three people. Two or three people. I told you my pot's case, getting cold! They have vital information. We need to find no, her Carol next. is definitely Miss Stiletto Heel. We didn't use forensic methods, but we're still closing in on the criminal. All we need is a corrupt judge, and we're off to the races. <sighs> Have I forgotten anything? Ah, oh, of course. Dun, 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 dun. The marks on her hand tell us that Anna was gripping something when she died. Do you remember that, Zack? Not really. What do you think she was holding on to? I think it was a round object. That's right. A round object. The marks on her hand suggest a peace mark. The man in the photo found in the woods had a tattoo of an upside down peace mark on his back. These two could well be related. But we don't know for That's sure. That's a perfect score, baby. Next, the town folk. Few are worthy of special attention. Yeah, all <laughs> medical Carol attention. McLean, the singer and bar owner. She's Thomas's sister. Then there's Nick Cormack, the owner of the diner. Both of them seem to be hiding something. I know because they told me. There's Diane, the owner of the art gallery, who's out of town. Then we have problematic, old, rich, and eccentric Harry. Boomer. Both will be tough to crack. Well, we just have to go one by one. I've been thinking. One of the biggest rewards here is the fantastic food. <laughs> Enjoying food is cultural, and yet it's also a bit uncivilized. It's interesting how good food motivates me to work harder during investigations. Oh, and on Emily's back, it was strange to me. Hey, don't take that the wrong way, Zach. I wasn't getting all excited or anything. <laughs> but it did make me feel strange. Nostalgic and sad, almost. It's starting to rain. It's 
starting to. I think this case may take a while. I like that. He can't sleep, so he just started counting flies. I don't even have to say it, I'm sure. You probably should not have the dog in the doghouse in the back of the truck. Oh, there's no space because he's got the plant there. I see. <laughs> well, good news, guys. I cleared dinner. <laughs> what? The Horizaru sword imported from Japan? Are you thirsty? You must be very thirsty. You only take milk with your coffee. I need an adult. Coffee with milk. That's all. It's quite, it's quite thick. We somehow developed an underbite in our sleep as well. Who are you? My name is Becky. What are you doing here? My name is <laughs> Becky. Anna's friend? My name is Becky. My name is Becky. Do your throat is quenched? You must do what you must do. Take a sip of coffee and go. Huh? <laughs> Yo, the other door opened up. It's a sequence break. We just got roll bombs. Sorry, I'm just repositioning myself. FLY in the cup, Zach. Chocolate chip cookie. Please wash your nasty suit. I will never wash my suit. A cop should be judged on the merit of his investigatory skills, not on the vile stenches emanating from betwixt his armpits. watching Tremors. It's me? <laughs> Get the flies out of your face. <laughs> Get up. Zack, this case looks like it's directly related to us. I do not know how yet, but I do know I need some coffee. George said he'd have someone pick us up in the parking lot. Let's get some breakfast with Polly first. Hell yes. Mm. 
No, we don't need that. Let's get a shower first. Oh, under no circumstances. I will never. Mm, don't need this room. <laughs> Whoa there. Did those, you need some? Those are a child's jeans. No, I was just passing by. I didn't think anybody else was here other than Polly. The door opening like that just it surprised me, that's all. <laughs> this is dead ass John Goodman from Barton Fink. This man is the devil. I'm Casey, Forrest Casey. Nice to meet you. I travel a whole lot, you see, selling tree saplings. Just the usual salesman doing the usual road trip. Sometimes I feel, I don't know, like a jolly old bumblebee spreading pollen. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I get it. You're the special agent Scarface that everyone's yakking about. <laughs> nice to meet you, Francis. Special Agent Scarface? I'd need a bigger scar to live up to that name. Call me York. That's what everyone calls me. I was waiting what? for it. <laughs> you got it. York. Is this your first visit here, then? Come here no, often. Sir. Actually, I've been coming here once or twice a year for oh, a while now. I don't get much business here, but it sure does make a fine vacation. I mean, it's a gorgeous hotel at a bargain price. Pet it's friendly, so too. It's relaxing in these parts, too. Oh, I just love all the nature. I feel so relaxed here. <laughs> Say hi to Willie. Oh, don't worry. He's a good boy. Do you like dogs? Hey, Willie. How you doing? Bang! <laughs> He's pretty smart, too. Oops, before I forget, let me give you this. It's just a sample of what Yo, I said. Yo, it's a sugar maple. Thank you. How kind of you. So, what brings the old FBI out here? Sounds like more than just a vacation. A murder, actually. I'll just plant that right here. The perpetrator here. is still out there. Try to stay indoors at night and during the rain. We want to prevent it from happening again, okay? Oh, it's a darn shame. Places like this used to be the safest in America. Could I ask you something? Do you know a lot about seeds? Seeds? Gardening, huh? You don't look like a green thumb, but let me tell you, though. I'm pretty much the only one who can make those saplings sprout. There's a trick to it that can't really be passed on, you know? It's like, oh, the secret of making a good smoked ham, something like that. Can I see you your know, back, sir? Once they sprout, you don't need to do much. You can leave it be, and why, it'll turn into a big tree no matter what happens. Kind of like those stocks that politicians buy that just keep growing and growing. Well, you just wait and see. This town is gonna love them. <laughs> right. <laughs> we were just about to go take a morning stroll, so I'll get going. Good luck now with that case. Thanks. <laughs> he has this Zach, an embroidered Dalmatian on his butt pocket. Forrest Kaysen. F. K. F. K. In the coffee. This show has just begun. Hello, Tomo. Time to get some breakfast. Excuse me, madam? No, I will never shave. I will never shower. You can't make me. It's it's my natural testosterone. Good morning, Agent Morgan. Did you sleep well? Morning, George. Dreamland was quite nice. You do look well rested. Oh, I was up practically all night doing paperwork. 
Thomas helped me out so I was able to go home and get some sleep, but not enough. Diane got back into town late last night. We should give her a visit. Which means going to the art gallery, correct? I she still want to get breakfast in the office Polly. there. So it's the only place to find her. The gallery is open from 10 to 1700. It's time for some art appreciation. Cultural activity in such a small countryside town. Amazing, Zach. Polly. Okay, I'll go with you. I was gonna eat breakfast, though. I just forgot how the hotel layout works. The gallery is called Muses Gallery. The Muses were the nine daughters of the goddess of memory in Greek mythology. Ah, uh, it's just like Diane to name it that way. Is she that intelligent a woman? Oh, uh, maybe. You'll see for yourself soon enough. Did you see how Emily reacted, Zach? I sense that this Diane oh. is not popular among Meow. I can't wait to meet her. The gallery is on the north side of town. Take the road along the lake and go north. Take the road along the lake and go north. Okay, my bad. There you go. It's 4,000 yards away. An art gallery in such a small town. Am I prejudiced to think that it doesn't seem to fit? Greenvale and every small town has every right to enjoy art. That's right. Small towns tend to be full of highly cultured people. Um, Although I can't say I've ever been to the gallery myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. George, what about you? Are you into art? Actually, yes. I like going to the gallery. It's very relaxing there. Really, George? I never knew that about you. You know they have a, an original Emily, W. Bush there. I'm just as cultured as everyone else. Some people just have sides to them that you'd never expect. <sighs> By the way, about Diane, the owner of the gallery. Is she the type that isn't very appreciated by other women? What do you mean? Exactly what it sounds like, Emily. Is she very attractive, especially to the opposite sex? So you're asking if she's sexy, right? Well, she does always wear high heels. And definitely, it's uh, hard to explain. But that doesn't make me biased, okay? She See just how seems windy it is? to look down on people. She always has. I just don't like people like that. That must be because sex appeal has no effect on you. Now that's out of line. I'm sorry, Emily. I didn't mean to poke fun at you. You just <laughs> reacted so strongly to Diane's name. I did not. It, it's like you're suggesting I'm the total opposite of her. Is that it? Oh, Emily, that's not what anyone is suggesting. Let's just drop this conversation, okay? Thanks for the assist, George. I really appreciate it. Us dudes have got to stick together. I wonder if there's built-in voice lines about the car being so stinky. It's like the sirens make it feel like I'm going faster, but the speedometer never changes. Sorry, the speedometer. Siren does make you go faster. Uh, prove it. Okay, no siren. 50. Siren? You know what? 55. 60. Fifty. 55 again. 40? Does the siren use more gas? Or 
Oh, it drains your stamina, too. Well, yeah, you gotta hold the button. In. Run out of siren fuel. I wonder if Diane has anything to do with the murder. Diane moves on a whim and acts on impulse. We don't want her leaving town, so shut up and let's get to the gallery. <laughs> don't tell your partner to shut up. Looks more like an old mansion than an art gallery. Diane liked the building so much she turned it into an art gallery. Ah, uh, a shrewd businesswoman. Left the exterior untouched and have the insides redone. So she's rich. She bought this place, didn't she? Does that answer your question? Indeed it does. Well, George, Emily, I want to talk oh, with no. Diane alone. That means Will gunplay. Here for me? uh, don't tell me you still don't trust us. I showed you no, my back. Not it. But this is very important to me. I always make sure that I meet with the important ones, one on one. Otherwise it's difficult to sense the subtle reactions of the suspect. This is just how I do things, and I'd appreciate your understanding. <laughs> but, go on then. You're not going to listen to us anyway, are you? You're starting to understand me, George. Well then, Zach, let's go and meet Lady Diane. What happened to calling him the Monarch? It's been two and a half hours he hasn't called him the Monarch once yet. Yo, that's the tree I murdered. Hello? <laughs> Hello? No reply. <laughs> I noticed. Let's take a look around then, Zach. It's at least five meters tall. Pretty big for an objet d'art. Pointy branches, razor sharp leaves. Great taste on the curator's part, greeting us with such a cool and sharp setup. Right, Zach? Oh, it's locked! Dun dun! Hello, Olivia. Do you like art? Yes. Yes, I do. Well, uh, I mean... I, I like trees. Trees. Okay. Ah, but I see because these are all tree paintings. This is the, come here this is the tree branch. Oh, uh, well... No. Just sometimes. I'm sorry, I really need to get back to the It's not illegal to appreciate art. I don't care if you voted for Ron. She was lying about something. She said trees, not paintings of trees. She doesn't need to come here to see trees. There's tons of trees outside. Absolutely true. <laughs> you got Olivia's memo. Key to the gallery. Tree at sunset, red leaves, dancing red butterflies. Pass to the office, number of red trees from the special exhibition room. of red trees from 
the special exhibition room. What a strange puzzle, Zach. The flies are tilting me? They don't bother me. This is just what it's like to, you know, have vision with early onset glaucoma. You're always taking the stairs like five at a time. Send them. You get paid for showering? Uh, wrong. I don't get paid for showering. York gets paid for showering. I get paid when you top right. There's a difference. Zach, something is still missing. We need more clues. That was worth a shot. Number, oh my god, that's a steep staircase, dude. Number of trees in the special exhibition room. One hundred percent combat section. Oh no. <laughs> Not this again. Oh, there's something in this one. Smoke salmon. <laughs> Let's go. Dry-aged. Oh! Red butterflies. A large tree and red butterflies. It almost looks as if it's burning. One tree? No, I don't think that's the special exhibition area. It does relate to the note for sure, but... Okay. You hear that? Oh, it has to be the first, second, and third did. Okay, okay, okay. I understand. I am a little lost, though. So the butterflies were the third section, if I remember correctly. Save it so we can pay off the god of dirtiness for us not showering. Tree at sunset. Red leaves. Dancing red butterflies. Pass to the office. Number of red trees from the special exhibition room.
You ready for this? Zach, something is still missing. We need more clues. It was worth a shot. Sunset. What does that mean? I know it probably signifies a painting, but what information do you get from that? Zach, something is still missing. We need more clues. Tree at sunset. So I think we're going to go back to the very first room. If I could figure out where we're supposed to go. Let me out, please. Tree at sunset. Trees at twilight. Six trees bathed in a summer glow. I'm totally gonna brute force this. I think. What's the other one called? Doesn't matter. It's cowardice. Zach, something is still missing. Okay. Next number, let's go uh let's go 621. Zach, something is still missing. We need more. You know clues. what? People would never expect 661 because it's the same number twice. Zach, okay. something is still missing. People would never expect clues. Six nine one because it's sixty nine. Zach, something is still missing. We need People more clues. would never expect six four one because it should be like six four two, right? Oh, bodied. Like I said, there's no point in you having this. I can put it to far better use. I'm taking it with me, okay? That's fine by me then, as you wish. <laughs> oh my god, it's Tony Collette. The FBI agent, right? Just wait a moment, please. I'll be right with you. Thought I smelled something. So there's no way you could have been at the scene of the crime. That's right. I was drinking at the bar with Nick until early morning. I'm sure if you ask him about it, he'll say the same. Very well. I'll be sure to do that. One other thing. That argument with Carol just now. She's always like that. She thinks of me as an enemy. Always bickering at what I say. <laughs> I was trying to think of what was, was bothering me. For that? Her hair Perhaps really is from Dark Souls she liked 1. Ended up with me in my bed? That would explain it, yes. If I may be so bold, who was the lucky man? Oh, I sleep with anyone I wish. Anyone I prefer to sleep with. I guess she had her eye on one of them, but I don't know who it was exactly. I could sleep with you, if you like. I'm flattered. Let me shower first. Offer. 
but I don't think that would be appropriate. You're exactly the kind of woman that a man in my job should never get involved with. <laughs> Isn't that a shame, darling? <laughs> yeah, York. I'm not tired. I just woke okay, up. Frank, right now you are not a suspect. But both Zack and I are certainly feeling shaky about you. If you want to remain in the clear, just watch yourself from now on. Oh, you don't know, do you? <laughs> he doesn't know! Artists and art lovers, we love a good thrill. Thank you for your help. I have nothing further to ask you at the moment. Goodbye. Goodbye to you as well. Oh, nailed it! Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. All right, then. See you. I'd like a dozen red roses, please. Oh, hey, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> yeah, imagine getting turned down by the stinkiest man in town. I've only got eyes for roaming Sigourney. I had a chat with Diane. She said she was at the bar drinking with Nick at the time of the murder. We need to confirm her story. Let's talk to Nick at the diner. Very well, Agent Morgan. I have to head back to the department and clear up some paperwork. Go with Emily to the A&G diner. Okay, then. And go with Emily I'll to you, you as way. well. The diner's open from 9 to 2100. Just as we suspected, Zach. Diane is the key to this case. I have a feeling she will lead us right to the criminal. But she... She has an alibi. That's Kaysen. Looks like the show has just begun, and it has an all-star cast. Alrighty then. <laughs> FK? FK in the coffee, FK in the chat, please. <laughs> they're gonna FK? Yeah, they're gonna freaking kiss. <laughs> Get cooties. Let's go. Emily, do you know a man named... Forrest Kaysen. Directed by Kaysen? Robert Zemeckis. Yes, I, I know him. The, the sapling salesman, right? He always uses strange comparisons when he talks. I'd like to know more about him. What does he do when he comes to town? He's a salesman, so I guess he sells things? God, that's why she Maybe became a cop. Maybe he comes on vacation. I, we haven't seen many tourists recently, but he comes pretty often. Is that all? Well, now that you mention it, he seems quite friendly with the Ingrams. With... Isaac and Isaiah. Uh, the other overall family. Maybe you should ask them about Kaysen. Okay, I will. Jeez. Uh, you're not gonna believe this. I'm pretty sure I just totaled the car. The gas does not gas anymore. So, oh, I fixed it. Emily, don't you find it a bit suffocating to be around George so much? Well, we aren't always together. <laughs> suffocating anyway, to be around George? Too. Impressive. Women are very adaptable. No, it's not like that, actually. I mean, George is hard-headed, sure, but he's also a hard-working man. That's why the townsfolk trust him so much. The very epitome of the rural sheriff. That's right. He isn't some hotshot FBI agent. This place isn't like the city. Everyone knows everyone else. What about you and Anna? Were you too close? No, not close. Really. She's kind of an airhead for my standards. I don't seem to have much standards. in common with teenagers nowadays. All they talk about are boys, clothes, and accessories. I don't have much interest in any of those things. There is a gap between a teenager and being in your 20s. Everyone's different, that's all. Yeah, it's Me called and you too. 19. Zach, I'm not liking the way this conversation is heading. Let's concentrate on driving instead. Skirt! 
Hey, watch it. I'm driving here. York out. Oh, the frames. Must have been a lot of particle effects right there. It might be the flies. Too stinky for Switch. That's what my comeback tour is going to be called. When I inevitably get cancelled. What? I can't spout bullshit on the internet anymore because I'm too stinky? Uh, Gunman is closed. Gunman lives on Pansy Street? Who... <laughs> who's responsible for the road names in this town? Muffler Road was bad enough, but... What's the deal with that? Just cause I... I puff mango vapor, I'm a criminal now? It's hard to be a man when there's a gun in your hands. I think you mean, It's hard to be a man when there's a gun in your hand. Let's just focus on getting to the diner and cut the chit-chat. <laughs> okay. Bit of an insulting prompt. Something happens and I'm head over heels. I never find everybody. Damn, head over heels. Oh, when you hit the note just right. One of my favorite bits I've been trying to do more on the show is uh, a suicide pass for very controversial song lyrics and see if Robert will actually finish them. Like, the, smell my dick. Wait a minute. Hold up. All right, you're uh, you're up, Robert. Fuck the police coming straight out the underground. All right, Robert, your turn. But then I realize if he actually said it. I'd probably get a 24-hour ban, so I don't know. I don't think he would say it, but... That's just the evolution of Mr. Toshi? Yeah, I know. Everybody told me Mr. Toshi wasn't funny, but we're still here talking about it like two years later. It's a cult classic. A and G Diner. Wonder what the A and G stand for. Any ideas, Emily? Nope, I don't know either. Air and gravity, perhaps? Yep. Access and games? Both. Aliens and Godzilla? <laughs> Who knows? Is it important to know? I mean, why don't you just ask Nick? Oh, I will. But the, yeah, the I G stands for get out until you shower, Stinky. <laughs> Hi, Olivia. My father was Mr. Let me your special Just call me today. York. And some fresh coffee. Our special today is turkey. Mm, sounds A good. A turkey and gravy sandwich. Sound good? Perfect. Emily, you eat something, too. It'll be on the FBI. Thanks, Chad. Okay, then. Thanks, I'll American taxpayer. I'll have the T-bone steak. I usually can't order it because it's a little too expensive. <laughs> Oh, she's a poor. <laughs> Let's just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Mrs. Olivia Cormack, I am here for Mr. Stewart's lunch. If it is ready, I'd thank you a This is mouth. Yes, 
of course. Just a moment. <laughs> if it is ready, I thank you, you a go. bunch. The usual. One turkey, strawberry jam, and cereal sandwich. Sounds like the sinner's sandwich. Self-inflicted punishment to atone for past sins. He's setting an example. Mr. Francis York Morgan, you should try this wonderful lunch. It's more than a delicious, tasty crunch. So says <laughs> Mr. Stoop. <laughs> He's just trying to make polite conversation no, now. I've just ordered my own lunch. Mr. Francis York Morgan. That's my name. That Don't wear it out. Mr. Stewart's order is delicious, I should mention. And Mr. Nick Cormack is a genius for creating... It's just a cereal sandwich, you weirdo. So says Mr. It's not Stewart. a substitute for a personality. Still, I have a hunch I might not like it. You sure that sandwich is that good? Mr. Francis York Morgan, making decisions based on intuitions is always a sign of bad FBI agents. So that doesn't even Mr. rhyme. Stewart. We've angered the rhymes out of him. I'll give it a try. Song. It's really good. <laughs> Olivia, I'm sorry, but can I change my <laughs> order? I'll have what Harry is having. When Harry met Sally. <laughs> it's mighty fine knife work. Nick and Diane. They hardly make the perfect couple, do they? Is it widely known that they go drinking together, just the two of them? To be honest, I don't pay attention to these things. Not into local gossip? Well, when I moved here, I was still in high school. You, know, you don't have to have a beer with every meal. Wild from my school in Seattle. I was young back then. And before I knew it, there were rumors all over the school. She'll screw anyone. That's what they said. Totally unfounded, of course. Well, anyway, after that, I just sort of chose not to. Once it to affected really trust me, I now. chose not to gossip anymore. I get where you're coming from. I used to dress like a hardcore punk rocker when I was in high school. I was into some pretty heavy stuff. Simple plan, Papa Roach. <laughs> you, a punk rocker? <laughs> Nobody took my side. Even when I had good grades, people rejected me just because of what I wore. <laughs> I'm young back then. What's wrong with this neck, dude? <laughs> Even still, I just don't see you as a punk rocker. <laughs> and you laugh. Look at you. New York, are you okay? Dressed in uniform, eating a steak for lunch. Okay, back to work. Let's talk to Nick. It's not that weird to be eating a steak for lunch, honestly. Think you're better than me? Just because I'm eating a cereal and strawberry jam sandwich and you're eating so-called adult food? This can't be that important if they didn't have vocal lines. Tongue and hand movements, sweat, dry lips, neck angles. <laughs> we'll play for like another five minutes or so. We started a little bit late here. Also, I just want like another cutscene, please. It has flown by. There's something I'd like to confirm with you, Olivia, if that's okay. Yes. Well, so long as it doesn't take too long. As you can see, we're very busy. First, 
What were you and Nick doing on the night of the murder? I was here in the diner. Nick said he was going to the bar for a couple of drinks. Does he go to the bar often, leaving you to hold up the fort? Y yes. Do you feel held by him? He says he enjoys the conversation with Diane. I thought they went drinking again together that night. Do the three of you ever go drinking together? Well, you see, I I'm really not into art. And your husband is well versed in the arts then, I take it? Oh, yes. Um, looking at art and talking about it is his way of relaxing. <laughs> People just aren't what they seem. A chef well, being into art? Who is into this is ridiculous. Years ago. You are absolutely right, Emily. But you can be an art lover and a liar. Oh! One more thing, Olivia. You just said that you aren't interested in art. And yet. That's right. Look and... at your walls. So, how come I bumped into you at oh, the art gallery? Oh, shit. Didn't seem like Nick brought you there. You were there alone. I... Well... I like trees, is the thing. I That's like why toils. I went there. Surely you'd be better off in the forest rather than an art gallery. Yeah, then. airhead. Uh... Bendel Barda. I think you went to the gallery not to see trees, but to see Diane, right? Uh, You'll have to excuse me. To answer. Or perhaps this isn't the right place to ask. M meet me in the backyard. You can get there from the parking lot. I'll wait for you there for an hour after we close up. Might as well just give this guy a master key at this point. They close at 2100. Should we get something to drink and wait? Yes. I will take one beer brand beer, please. And, uh, do you want to share a can of tomatoes? You want to split? You go half on a can of tomato sauce with me? Agent York, what do we do now? I want to hear what Olivia has to say. Let's kill time until the diner closes. Okay, then I'm going to make a trip back to the department. I'll see you in the backyard later. Oh, <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> see you later, then. Back about Olivia. I presume she wants to tell us something about Nick and Diane. Let's hope it's not just something for the gossip homes. What time do you close? 2100! Well... I guess that's as good a time as any for us to... save it up, but... Someone suggested finish it off by having lunch at the police station. I know it's extremely close. I will not shower. Let's have a second lunch. Uh, I have to be honest with you, a cereal and jam sandwich? I don't know where it's at on the glycemic index, but I don't think it's gonna keep you satisfied for that long. And turkey? Yeah, but it was probably turkey roll. Not even real turkey. What is turkey roll? Is an Utica expression. Excuse me, where's my friggin' lunch? Thomas? Thomas! Is it lunchtime? That's 10 a.m. She was just eating a T-bone steak and drinking a beer, so... Whatever, dude. 
we'll just pull out a pull out a very heavy cigarette. Pass some time. There you go. Smoke it up in the middle of the police station. Skirt. Let's go! It worked! I'm surprised. I didn't Hello? expect it to. Would you like to have lunch with us? Us? Oh. Thomas. Oh my have goodness. you eaten Emily's cooking? <laughs> what? Hey. What exactly are you asking? I was just wondering what you thought of her cooking, that's all. You know, perhaps an unbiased opinion of one who is himself a fantastic chef. So how about it? Have you eaten her cooking? I have. Just once. And how was it? Well, that's not an easy question. Honesty is the best policy. How can I say this? Cut it out, Agent York. <laughs> He's pleading the fifth. He has the right to remain silent. Don't try to That's mixed metaphors, something. George. He has the right to an attorney. George, and what are you trying to say? Anything I say may be used in a court of law. Let's just let the topic of Emily's I love a hot dog okay. with some sliced grapefruit on the side. I want to know. I guess it's just my curiosity. So tell me, Thomas. Well, for lack of a better word, let's just say it's Amazon-style cooking. Ah, that was well said. I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, you were lacking words. <laughs> what does words. that mean? Style cooking. Top <laughs> right, by the way. <laughs> oh. George, he's a character. You mean the monarch. And now you do the thing you always do, where you're like, uh, okay, let's uh, save again, just in case I didn't save a second ago because I wasn't paying attention. 